Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is fried foods. And we all know that fried foods are bad for us. I mean, I don't know anybody that, that, is, that is living in la-la land and saying, well, fried foods are okay. We all know fried foods are a detriment to our health. French fries, whatever it is. So I just wanted to, to really get this point across that here's some of the issues with fried foods. I mean, you can do a Google search and say, and find, you know, thousands upon thousands of articles, scientific studies of saying of the dangers of fried foods. But what you, things you don't realize what really happens in a restaurant. Now, I don't have a fryer in my restaurant, but I've seen this happen, happen over the years. I see this when I go to other restaurants. Um, the fryer, first of all, cooking things in oil, whether you're sauteing it or frying it, heating oil causes a detriment to the oil itself. So there really is no great silver bullet oil to use. There's certain oils that are better than others, means they withstand heat better, like coconut oil, macadamia nut oil, uh, maybe rice bran oil. Um, so there's certain oil, uh, mustard seed oil. So there's certain oils that you can say, okay, these do withstand heat better. They're not going to break down as much as olive oil. Olive oil is breaks down at a very low temperature. Um, a lot of people cook with olive oil still, and a lot of chefs like Mario Batali, you know, and on Food Network and everything, you have all these chefs that cook with olive oil and they do these, these restaurants. That's probably one of the worst oils to cook with. I mean, there's a lot of bad oils to cook with. I wouldn't cook with cottonseed oil because the toxins in it, I mean, all the pesticides they spray on cotton. Um, corn oil because it's genetically modified. Most oils are expeller, are not expeller pressed, but they're, they're extracted with hexane gas, a petroleum solvent, so there's a chemical in the oil to extract it out. So there's a lot of just bad, bad oils to begin with. So the problem is, if you're going to a restaurant and you're buying an order of french fries, right, and they're, you know, three, four bucks, five bucks, even six bucks, the, the restaurants aren't using good oil. They're just not. They're, 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 they're in a price point to buy the cheapest oil possible to spend, you know, 20 bucks or 30 bucks on a huge five gallon tub of oil. Okay, some of these oils do go up to 50, 75, 125. Uh, coconut oil would be almost 250 for that 25, uh, for that 35 five gallon pail. So restaurants are gonna stick with the cheaper version, okay? They're already serving you something that's bad and toxic for you anyway, so why would they take the time to really put better oil in there, okay? So some restaurants tout that they are serving better oil, and they, they are serving better oil, but the problem is, once you heat the oil, you start denaturing it, okay? You, you rupture the DNA of the oil, you, you, you start rancifying it. Really, once you extract oil to begin with out of a nut or a seed or even an olive, which is a fruit, you start the rancify, it starts rancifying right away because you've extracted it from the enzymes and the fiber of the plant. So as soon as that separation happens, your shelf life starts ticking on that oil because it's not in its whole form. So if you're concerned about getting good oils in your diet, you want to eat the olive, you want to eat the nut, you want to eat the almond itself, okay? But this isn't about getting good oils in that, it's about avoiding fried foods and what happens in restaurants. So. When you heat an oil, it starts breaking it down. When you press it, it starts to extract it, it starts breaking it down. So what happens is that in restaurants, they turn the fryer on when they first come in. And that fryer sits there and it stays on all day long. So what happens is that just sits there and just to a point where it's broken down in the first you know, 15 minutes, half an hour, but this oil just sits there and stays on all day long. And they're cooking in this all day long. They're throwing chicken, chicken in it, they're throwing potatoes in it, they're throwing fish in it, they're throwing all different kinds of things into this fryer. And bits and pieces of, of, the, of the food is just getting caught, caught in the oil, but the oil is so rancid. Now, you can't really smell rancid oil um, because Oil doesn't have any protein, and the protein is what actually smells. So once an oil starts smelling in a fryer, it's all the other junk that's falling into the oil, all the pieces of the food debris that's actually falling out of the food that you're frying. So it's really, really nasty. Now, if you look at a deep fryer, a, a, a professional, a commercial deep fryer, after they use it all day long, not even all day long, after they fry like two or three batches of French fries, um, you know, full baskets, front after part two or three, you notice the oil levels start going down. There's a line in the back of fryers, which is that the fill level to the oil. Now the, I've seen this time and time and time again. On a daily basis, you have to pour sometimes up to a half a gallon or a gallon of oil in because the food you're cooking absorbs the oil. So not only is it absorbing, it's not absorbing like fresh oil, it's absorbing this rancid, old, disgusting oil. Now oil, like I said, starts 
going bad as soon as you extract it from its original food item. So now imagine putting it into um, into a fryer. And some restaurants are even still using trans fats or hydrogenated fats. Certain cities across the U.S. have banned trans fat, but that's still a predominant oil to put in. And by the hydro hydrogenation process, you automatically turn the oil rancid. It's it's automatically rancid. That's just how you do it. You're stabilizing the oil, and you know at that point, it, 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 the process just rancifies it. So. The oil sits there all day long. You cook it in. Some restaurants don't change their oil for two, three, four days sometimes. Some restaurants are on top. If you ever go to McDonald's and you like look in and you see on the mirror up there, you look into the oil, the oil's like crystal clear because they're on top of it. But they're still not using a good oil is the issue. And that oil, all that excess fat is still getting put into your food. So you're taking, I found one article that says you're taking a potato that's a 700 calorie potato and turning it into like a 2200 calorie dish. Okay, so 700 calories to 2200 calories is a huge difference. And one potato is not that, I mean, it's not that much. If you, French, if you make french fries out of one potato, a kid can easily eat that. Easily eat that. So now you have some kids are eating two, or some adults are eating two potatoes worth of french fries. And on top of it, they're eating old fryer. And it's just, it's really, a, I mean, it, it's horrific to think that some people say, well, I can still eat fried foods. And a lot of vegetarians or vegans say, well, you know, I go to a place and french fries are the safest thing that I can eat because I know that they're, they're you know, they're vegetarian or they're vegan, right? But the consequences overall are just so detrimental. It's, it's disgusting. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. The ins and outs of the fryer, the actual fryer that, that places are cooking with. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.